Hello everyone, my name is Onyechi A.K. I am an ultrasound fellow in the Department of Emergency Medicine at Massachusetts General Hospital. And with me, we have our Division Chief, Andrew Leteplo. Hello everybody. So today we'll be discussing the case of the tender belly. Let's get into it. So the case is of a 32-year-old male with a history of ulcerative colitis who presented with three days of abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, and anorexia. His vital signs were normal. His physical exam was notable for a soft but mildly distended abdomen. There was some mild guarding, no rebound, and there was tenderness to, di to palpation diffusely, mostly in the right lower quadrant. Andrew, at this point, what were you thinking? Well, the differential is obviously quite broad in him. We're thinking of an ulcerative colitis flare because he's got a history of that. With his right lower quadrant tenderness, we have to consider appendicitis. Biliary disease, given the right-sided pain, is a possibility as well. He had history of remote abdominal surgery, so bowel obstruction is a possibility. Renal colic, enteritis, peptic ulcer disease, hepatitis, pancreatitis, all of the other stuff is on the differential. So at this point, we decided to obtain an ultrasound of his abdomen. We looked in the right upper quadrant, uh, looking for gallstone pathology. That was normal. We looked at the kidneys. There was no hydro. So at this point, we went to the lower abdominal quadrants. And this is what we found. Great. So can you describe that on you? So I see dilated, fluid-filled loops of small bowel. Good. I see the same thing. Now, why do you call it dilated? So normal bowels should be less than 2.5 centimeters. We measured it here in this patient and it was 4.1 centimeters, so definitely dilated. Great. You also said that it's small bowel. small bowel. How can you tell small bowel versus large bowel? So small bowel, as we see here, has the plique secularis that is circumferential. In large bowel, it will not be circumferential. Right. And you see that right here, going mm -hmm. all the way across. Okay, what else are you seeing here? So we see this to and fro movement of the bowel content, something we call pendulous peristalsis. It makes me think that there is something that is blocking the forward flow of the contents. Right. All the bowel is going down, hits some sort of roadblock, and turns around. Yeah. So at this point, we were concerned for a small bowel obstruction. We placed an NG tube. We called general surgery, and they wanted us to obtain a CAT scan, which confirmed our findings. So here we see those dilated loops of bowel, and we see that air fluid level. Great. So... If we saw it on ultrasound and on CAT scan, what's the data on the, how good different imaging modalities are for diagnosing bowel obstruction? Well, Andrew, I'm glad that you asked. So this is a meta-analysis that was done by Taylor and his colleagues in Canada. They looked at different imaging mo modalities, ultrasound, CAT scan, and abdominal x-ray to see how well they were in diagnosing SBO. Their data shows that point-of-care ultrasound is superior to CAT scan and abdominal x-ray in diagnosing SBO. Their inclusion criteria were bowel loops that were more than 2.5 centimeters and absent or decreased peristalsis. So, Andrew, at this point, if point-of-care ultrasound is superior to CAT scan in diagnosing SBO, why do we still do CAT scans? That's a really good point. I think from a diagnostic standpoint, we could use ultrasound. I think everybody would know at this point this patient has a bowel obstruction. Mm -hmm. However, the CAT scans are really useful in guiding the management. Knowing if it's partial versus complete obstruction is helpful. If it's a closed loop obstruction, finding the location of the transition point is helpful. Knowing the cause of the bowel obstruction, if it's adhesions versus a mass. And then looking for late findings um, such as pneumatosis that would, that would um, help guide your management decisions and maybe the need for surgery. I do think there's probably a group of patients, maybe those with known adhesions and a history of bowel obstruction, they appear non-toxic, they, they look well, they're the ones that tell you this feels exactly like my, my prior bowel obstruction. Mm -hmm. They're usually right when they say that. So I think that group of patients exists where we could completely eliminate CAT scan, um, but the data is not out there to, to tell us exactly who that is. Okay. So now that we know that point of care ultrasound is very good in diagnosing SBO, the question is how do we perform this exam and what are the pertinent ultrasound findings? So classically, we have been taught to use the covilinear probe 
and we are taught to scan the entire abdomen, starting from the right lower quadrant and ending in the left lower quadrant, something known as mowing the lawn. Andrew, is this what you typically do for your patients? I sometimes might start with this, but to be honest, I don't think this is the best method. You can see here in this example, if you're looking only anteriorly and there are air fluid levels, all you see here is air. And air in ultrasound does not look like bowel. In fact, you see these things that look like A-lines, but they're coming from within the bowel and it's obstructing your view of the dilated loops of bowel. I actually think that it's probably more sensitive to look in the paracolic gutters from a lateral approach. You can see here the exact same CAT scan. If you're looking laterally, you'll hit the fluid first, chest, abdominal wall fluid, and then no air. And what you'll see here are, you'll have a, a better look at the bowel itself, the dilated loops of bowel. Thanks, Andrew. So now that we know how to do the exam, the question is, what do we look for? And we are going to go through all of these. So first off, dilated loops of bowel. So as we discussed, more than 2.5 centimeters, as was seen in the patient that we discussed initially. And here are just more examples of those dilated loops of bowel. Next is decreased peristalsis. We I, see here. I love this clip here. Mm -hmm. this, this one, this is just normal peristalsis. Yeah. But you can see the smooth muscle of the bowel is just plowing the poop down like, like it's a bulldozer. Looking for the absence of peristalsis is something we talk about when looking yeah. for, for bowel obstruction. And can help differentiate from ileus. Ileus should have no peristalsis. Okay. Decreased present peristalsis is more likely to be bowel obstruction. Okay. And these are some more clips here. This is one of my favorites also, where this is our famous poop waterfall <laughs> here. Everything's dilated and the stool is just falling down into this pit. Yeah, it's a fun clip. Next, we look for pendulous peristalsis. That's to and fro movement of bowel content, like what we saw in the case that we presented, mm -hmm. as we see there. Next is free fluid. So I see some free fluid here. Andrew, when you see free fluid, what does that make you think about? I think the free fluid is probably a later finding. The first thing that happens is you have the, the blockage and then everything backs up and you have increased pressure and these big dilated loops and then there's nowhere else for the fluid to go. So it extravasates through the walls and accumulates outside of the bowel. There are a couple small studies that, sh that actually show that free fluid is a predictor for the need for surgery. Okay. Next is wall thickening. Some cases have found um, increased thickness of the bowel wall. Right, normal bowel wall is usually less than two millimeters. It's considered abnormal when it's greater than four. I personally think this is an, an atypical, not specific and, and not sensitive finding, so I don't routinely measure the bowel wall. Thanks, Andrew. So in summary, we know that point of care ultrasound is more accurate than abdominal X-ray and CT in diagnosing SBO. Remember to use your covilinear probe. Also avoid air by going laterally. And remember your pertinent findings. Dilated loops of bowel that are more than 2.5 centimeters and decreased or pendulous peristalsis. Remember to follow us on Twitter at MGHED Ultrasound. Thank you, Andrew. Thanks for listening. Happy scanning. Happy scanning.